Welcome, everyone. I am Bob Wurzelbacher, the director of the Respect Life Office for the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. And this is our video podcast series that we call Being Pro-Life. Each month, we'll discuss a different topic in the Respect Life arena. We'll hear personal stories from people deeply affected by those issues. And finally, we'll share ways that you can get involved. This month's topic is pro-life activities around the world. We're going to talk with people from every corner of the globe this month. So let's talk now with this week's guest. Will you please introduce yourself? My name is George Winker, and I am a regional director for West Africa and Central Africa, and I'm based out of Douala, Cameroon. What are some of the big issues, right, in the pro-life movement that are going on in Africa, or at least in the region of Africa where you work? The first big pro-life issue is there are contraceptives like Depo-Provera, there's the issue of the morning after pill, which goes through very robust regulation and robust examination in Western countries, but which is actually being introduced across Africa. You could actually buy the morning after pill in Cameroon, just as you would buy airtime for your telephone. The things which the West thinks are serious enough to be put through very tough review and examination are actually being passed around here like candies. And that's where the problem is. No enforcement, therefore, of any laws and regulations or no pharmaceutical company can be held responsible for something that happens to a consumer because the person used their product. You would know that each time there's a change in U.S. presidency from a president who thinks life and family ought to be protected, we feel the impact in Africa. Because basically, these non-governmental or international organizations dishing out contraception, birth control, morning after pill, are only able to do so when they can find funding from friendly foreign governments, mainly in the West. Now, so if you look at Africa, usually the only block standing in defense of life and the family is the church. So what's the state of abortion in many countries of Africa? Is it illegal? Is it legal? In many countries of Africa, abortion is illegal, but it is largely available. But as you know, what the devil does in the process of legalization of abortion is that the devil is quite patient sometimes. The organizations that have the money, the influence, come in and say, so many people are dying, and the biggest trump card they have for selling abortion is the word safe. They say people are having it anyway. So the, the only way by which you can make this good for your people is by making it safe. So they would go to authorized institutions and persons to have this. In the United States, it's the very same argument. It's like, well, if we make abortion illegal, it will still happen, but then it'll be unsafe. One of the things that the West is trying to do in Africa is to normalize abortion. And not just abortion to normalize all the wrong things. This is true for abortion. It is even truer for same-sex unions, right. which is the next big area of confrontation. People are fighting it. The church is working hard on it. Western countries are holding back money because of that. I remember Barack Obama going back to his native Kenya and being told in a public situation, President Kenyatta told Obama to his face, this issue is not up for discussion as far as Kenya is concerned. When you begin to get more and more African leaders who are ready to hold their own, who are ready to remind the West that before they came to our countries, we had cultures, we had morals, we had laws that guided the way people lived and functioned with each other. When we have more presidents in Africa standing up and saying this, it will be a very big day for the pro-life movement and for life. Many people speak about the prophetic nature of Humane Vitae. One of the things Humane Vitae says, plus 50 years ago, if we do not stand up against this, foreign aid, foreign financial assistance is going to be predicated as to the extent to which you accept or do not accept contraception and all what comes with it. But we're seeing it today. George, here in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, there are quite a few priests and a few seminarians even from the continent of Africa. I think the most from Ghana. They're Ghanaian. Do you know much about, about Ghana? Yes, I do. I go to Ghana all the time. 
And a lot of these traditions are traditions, like I said, that are essentially pro-life. You are not allowed to kill another human being, be it a baby that's in the womb or an old man that is 120 years old. So if you do that, then the culture tells you you're in the wrong place. But here is what they are facing. Ghana is a prospering economy. It's one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. And once you get an economy that is growing and a middle class is beginning to form, they can afford contraception, they can afford junk that unfortunately the West brings to us, then they begin to get interested in your country. IPPF is not there for anyone's good. They are there to push a multi-million industry. And that is why if you see the way they work in Africa, their conditions of work are always very good. Brand new cars, five-star hotels. And if you do that in a country where most people cannot afford it, people are bound to see you as a force for good. You brought up IPPF. If people don't know, that's International Planned Parenthood Federation, of course, is what you're talking about. Do you want to say a little bit more specifically about what it is that Planned Parenthood International is doing in Africa? What Planned Parenthood Federation is doing in Africa is that they go to countries in Africa and they say National Association for Family Welfare. Mm. Who would be against family welfare? Right. No, nobody's against families and the welfare of exactly. families. So basically, they sell themselves as an organization coming to look after the family. But if you look at how much money, how much time, and how much rot, if I may call it this way, that is spent and devote to young people in sexually active age, then you begin to ask what family are they talking about? And if the buck is big enough, people are ready to fight for it. So what about either assisted suicide or euthanasia? Is that a big issue in Africa as well? No, it's not a big issue. Okay, good. I'll tell you, if anybody gets old and there are no children looking after him, it is considered to be scandalous. We don't have a social welfare system, but we have a social structure that obliges children to look after their parents morally. So basically, our societies are still sometimes, if you want to call them primitive in some senses, but if it comes to looking after our parents and our elderly and making sure they're fine, we're glad to be primitive. So George, how it is that people could get involved? Not only does Human Life International work in more countries than any other organization in Africa in the area of life and family, but Human Life International is very innovative. So we are not just going to the places where the damage has been done. We're going to the places where we can touch lives, influence people, impact seminarians, support priests, assist apostolic workers. I am sure we might be able to do even more by your kind and generous support. Okay, so if you go to hli.org, you can see it on the screen, that stands for Human Life International, hli.org. So here's the main page. And then uh, on ways to give, uh, let's start with donate online. If you go to that page, what if someone wants to donate specifically to Africa or to Ireland or to Ecuador? Just maybe put in right here in the prayer intentions or the donation comments. Yeah. I want this to go to, to Africa. Okay, great. If you want to know more about what's going on, yeah. there's news and commentary, there's mission reports, yeah. life newsletter. So if you go to the mission reports, one of the recent ones in 2019, November, the first one, priests gather from eight countries to attend the Summer Institute. There you are, George, right there with the Cardinal yeah. in that picture. So that's a good article to read for yeah. people who are interested in learning more about that. All right, George, well, thanks so much for talking with us today about the pro-life movement in Africa. It was better educated on what's happening and how it is that we can help. Thank you so much for having me. I, I think it was time very well spent. And I want to thank all of our viewers and listeners for tuning in on this episode of our Being Pro-Life series. Head to the website and view all the links talked about in this episode at www.catholiccincinnati.org slash being-pro-life. Thank you again for joining us today, and I look forward to being with you next time.